So this says in each of one through four, represent the common form of each argument using letters to stand for component sentences and fill in the blanks so that the argument in part B has the same logical form as the argument in part A. So part A provides us the logical form that we need to represent in part B. Now the, the logic of part A is different than the content of part A. The content here talks about rational integers and the number one, whereas part B doesn't talk anything about that. However, part A has this logical form to it, meaning that these statements are connected using if-then statements, uh, declarative statements, conclusions, and we can mirror this logical form in part B. So let's take a look at the logic form of part A. The first thing is an if-then statement. So the if part is all integers are rational, and the conclusion is that the number one is rational. Now I put the if part in purple and the then part in red, just so that we can see that this is a compound statement. In this case, these two statements are connected by an implication that the purple statement implies the red statement. Now right underneath, we have another statement, all integers are rational. Now this is the hypothesis of the first statement. So I'm gonna use the same color, purple, and then it says, therefore the number one is rational which was the red statement. Now, I like to represent each of these statements with P's, Q's, and R's. So I'll represent my purples with P's and my reds with R's. This way we can clearly see the logical form and we can ignore the content of what is being said because we don't care about the content when we're doing part B. We just care about the logical form. So this really just says P implies R. The next statement is just P and the conclusion is R. And I put three little dots to just show that this part is the conclusion. So let's reflect this logical form in part B. So for part B, it says, if all algebraic expressions can be written in prefix notation. Now you don't even need to know what prefix notation is. You don't need to know whether or not the statement is true or false, because it's not the content that we're looking at in this problem. It's the logic form. So if all algebraic expressions can be written in prefix notation, then blank. If we want to reflect the same logic form from part A, I'm going to represent this hypothesis in purple, just like it was in part A. We'll figure out what to put in the blank later. The next statement says, therefore, a plus 2b times a squared minus b can be written in prefix notation. So this is the conclusion here, which is the red part in part A. So I'm going to underline this part in red. So what are we missing? We're missing this piece R and this piece right here, P. And that's what needs to go in these two blanks. We have R that needs to go here, the thing in the red, and the thing in the purple needs to go here. Okay, so it's kind of hard for me to fit this in here, but I put the thing under in, but I put the red statement in this first blank, a plus two b times a squared minus b can be written in prefix notation, whatever that means. That needs to be the conclusion of this if-then statement so that part B can represent the same logic form as part A. And then we have one more blank down here. Now it kind of looks like this is the same blank, but this is actually a different blank because we're missing P here, which was that all integers are rational, which was the hypothesis of the if statement. And so I can put that statement right here. And that's how you solve this problem. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.